Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? You must excuse me. I'm in the middle of a sneeze fest. It's been crazy. I was fine up until a half hour ago. I think I played with Tony a little bit, tried to get him tired before the show. <clears throat> and he's just giving off all types of nasty stuff. So I'm just sneezing like crazy. So I'll be sniffling, sneezing. My voice is shot because I sneezed 8,000 times before I got on the show. But that's not going to stop me from getting you some content on a Tuesday talking shit episode. Today, <clears throat> see, let's see what's going to mean. There goes my voice. Today, want to talk. What I want to talk about is something that something that's been bothering me that for a, a while since VMP announced the uh, Whipple partnership. First of all, I'll comment a little bit on the video that they released talking about 800 horsepower on 93 octane again pulling a lethal and t misleading the public when in actuality it had boosting in the tank. <clears throat> so we'll talk about the video. We'll talk about everything, but I also want to really go into detail. Let me slow down my talking because I think it's uh, not helping. I really want to go into detail about the 3.1 TVS. And I think the lack of performance that the Eaton 3.1 rotor pack showed was not a fault of the rotor pack. And I'm 100% speculating here. But I'm going to give you some kind of lineage like I do. And I try to give you and lay out the case that the 3.1 Eaton failed not because of Eaton. I think it failed because of, let's just say, money, case design, and an understanding of what the 3.1 rotor case needed to make more power over the 2.6 or 2650 rotor pack. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about their video, talking about 800 plus horsepower, 93. Again, you really got to stop that stuff, guys. You really need to stop saying 93 octane and uh, 800 horsepower through catalytic converters. You are setting the customer up to blow up his motor, and most customers don't know what they're talking about. We'll talk about all that, but not before Mr. Bill O'Reilly says hello to the people here. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. Exactly. It always, always sucks. That's right. We got DNA High Performance, DNA Performance.com. DNA High Performance, I actually hit him up for some wheels, and I have not heard back. Again, I have not heard back, DNA. I want some 15 by 10 with six and a half inch back spacing. Weld wheels, hit me up. T-Mass, Big James and T-Mass getting the cold air is giving away to the people here. I love the fact that he does that. He doesn't have to do that, but I love the, the fact that he does that. The only cold air I recommend above stock on any Coyote. Bartong.com. I might be hitting them up to see if they have any kind of VMP Gen 2 R kits, takeoffs, or Roush kits. They'd probably give me a smoking deal on one. Two Auto Solutions, Two Auto Solutions in Puerto Rico. Hopefully he's okay, but last time I heard he was spending some good money with Mr. Alex Bledsoe, and it's nice to hear. Two Auto Caliber Transmission got my Corvette, and he's like, bro, your second gear is smoke. Time to find a new one. They put the word out that I need myself a second gear for our Corvette TR1, TR660, Balak Industries, Balak. I'm going to get some Balak on the Corvette once I get it back from Ben so we can go nines in the quarter mile. Damian Barato, Balak in Miami. <laughs> MFP, MFP of Australia. My voice is shot. See, it's gone. I was fine. I didn't say a word all day. <clears throat> then I sneezed 13,000 times. And my voice is fucking shot and gone. I'm so pissed off about that. But what are you going to do? <clears throat> and I got a big interview tomorrow. See? I sound like a fucking kid. I have a big interview tomorrow and my voice is going to be shot. I fucking hate allergies. And of course, this stupid chat thing doesn't want to work. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this fucking thing. I swear to God, it's going to be one of those days where I'm going to say, you know what? Let me just take a vacation. Leon Phillips, I'm hung so low. Joe Swish, 2000 MCR. Bryson Witt, Douche did it. 2000 MCR again. Travis Carter TV, Monty540, Rad Dad, Mr. Biggs, Christian Duran, 2JZ Foxbody, F-150, S-550, Riley Newfeld, <coughs> Wesley Stewart, <laughs> Clip Pop the Horse, GT Mustang, Rich Favreau, Travis, Michael Reno, The Wolf, Gallo Rabo, Drew Murkowski, Brie Lavesh, Nick, I'm not going to say the rest of that, Rocco's the only Stewart, D-Rock D Fox, Anthony D-Rock Fox again, RoboStyle, Nuxo, Victor Sardone, Dalton Dale, um, EPA, Bill, Bullet Bill, AJ, JD Swag, Freedom Rider, Rad Dad, Ken Phillips, Mendoza County, Ken Phillips again, Nixon Tarpia, Carter's TV, one of one RTR, Greg Ruiz, Dakota Kid, JD Swag, Michael Locke, Savat Martiner, David, Kevin Baskochea, Gregory Ovich, Joseph Jarosek, Jarosek, 
my lord. <clears throat> um, DRAP Fox, Paul Pontiu, Diego, Gallo Bravo, TNS197, Monty540, Sippy Boy, Itchy Bison, Matt L, Sippy Boy again. Let's get all the way to the bottom. I'll say my thing for about 15 minutes and then we'll talk some shit. <clears throat> Ford Lover, um, Nardi, Mercado, Elvo Galarga, Mercury Motorsports, DJ, Tristan, Drew, Tony Dominguez, SK Jeff, more pews, more boost, Phil Fez, ESS50. By, by, by the way, I got on ESS's ass the other day and they came correct. With Valley 10 speed. I appreciate that. Laura T. I don't know who that is. Native Shift. That 420, 427 dude. Jason, Mike, May, and Tony. Okay, so. When the Gen 2 was out. And VMP was pushing the Gen 2. They took an existing case. And hogged out the inlet a little bit. Made it bigger. And then they found out that it made a little bit more power. But not a lot more power. Like the difference between a Trinity TVS. And a VMP Gen 2 was nothing. It was not even a big difference. I remember there was a test they did at Power by the Hour. And they put it on a GT500 and it made zero extra horsepower. The VMP Gen 2R <clears throat> made maybe 10 more horsepower. Not, nothing crazy. But for a race application, it was a little better. But I think they were in the infant stages of learning what porting was all about. Instead of casting a bigger inlet, they probably should have taken away material from the bearing cage to allow more air to get into the rotors they found that out later on and i think they incorporated that um, learning feature into the cast <clears throat> so then they went ahead and because in my opinion roush was thinking about making a 2650 so because their cast was being done by roush and performance assembly solutions roush approached vmp and said do you want to make a case for the 2650? I am 100% speculating this. I don't know. I don't I don't know what happened behind the scenes. This is what I'm, you know, it makes sense in my head. Do you want to make a case for the 2650? Sure. How much is the tooling going to be? So that's where I think the, the issue started happening. If you need to retool to make a case for the 2.6 that's coming out, what are you going to do about the tooling that's wearing out for the VP Gen 2 and the Gen 2 R? Well, you're either going to let it go or at hope that Roush picks up the bill because it's a big cost. It's like forty to $80,000 depending on how intricate it is. So I don't think VMP was willing to pony up the dough to re-up on the tooling to make the VMP Gen 2. So they let it die. Okay? So now the VMP Gen 3, they put all their eggs in the VMP Gen 3 basket, the 2.6 liter, to the point where... They were selling a blower that had the capability of making 11 or 1200 horsepower to guys that had stock motors. And I thought, wow, that's crazy. They could have had a VMP Gen 2R to the stock motor guy to make up to 850. And then if they want to sell them on another blower, the VMP Gen 3 would come into play. But because of the tooling costs and I think because of the politics behind it, they said, let the VMP Gen 2R die will go ahead and ride out with the VMP Gen 3 case. <clears throat> VMP Gen 3 case, it's doing good. It's competing against Whipple. Let's be honest. The VMP Gen 3 competes line on line with the Gen 5 3 liter Whipple all day. I, I, I will put my money. To this day, people call me or email me that have Whipples on their cars. And they're like, Alex, I need more oomph out of the hole. I said, what do you got? They go, I got a Whipple Gen 5 3 -0. I go, then you get yourself a TVS. If you need, like say you're eighth mile racer and you want more oomph down low, you get a TVS because you actually really need to tame down the, the spark and power and really plant the tire really well and get the suspension dialed in on a uh, TVS than the Whipple. Now, before you fucked hard, say, oh yeah, I've seen guys do bumper dragging wheelie on, on Whipple superchargers. I've seen bumper dragging wheelies with a small block Ford 302. That doesn't mean that the small block Ford 302 is making gobs of power. It means the suspension is set up super loose in the front. That's all it means. So if you're a racer that knows anything, you're like, well, I'm going to go ahead and have as much power available based on the power adder, as opposed to trying to pour in timing and fool it with gear ratio to get it out of the hole. But they don't listen to me. They go, oh, no, we're going to ride it with Whipple and it's all good. Fine. No, do whatever. I don't care. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, now came time for the 3.1. Okay, so the Roush partnership died. 
now Magnuson is fucking with VMP, and now they are in the middle of probably trying to stuff an existing 2.6 case, an existing 2.6 case with 3.1 rotor pack. Now, guys, go ahead and Google image a VMP Gen 2R. Google image a VMP Gen 3. The case is noticeably bigger. The VMP Gen 3 is noticeably physically bigger, taller than a 2.3 VMP Gen 2R. Am I wrong? Now, how much bigger was the case that they attempted to make power with the 3.1 rotor pack? I can almost bet you that they used the existing case to attempt to make packaging work because what was the alternative? Make a whole new case, right? They would have had to make a complete new case, bigger, taller than the existing 2650, in my opinion, in order for it to show promise over the 2650. But imagine you're trying to stuff an existing case that was designed for the 2.6 with 3.1 rotors. And then when you put it on the dyno, you're mind blown that it didn't make any more power than the 2650 did. Maybe it made a little bit down low quicker based on the pulley size, <clears throat> but top end, it petered out. How much you want to bet? It got up to the power that the 2650 made and then it went flat and it didn't make any more power. So based on just physics, if you see a three, a 2.3 liter uh, supercharger go from a certain dimension, and then when a 2650 came out and they actually went wider and taller, why wouldn't that theory apply when you're going from a 2650 to a 3.1? In my opinion, it is absolutely um, logical to think that the case has to grow by the same percentage it did when you went from 2.3 to 2.6 from 2.6 to 3.1 so i think they're stuck because i don't think they wanted to re-up on the tooling or whoever was designing the case was let's just say attempting to put 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag and they figured out that all of a sudden this is not going to do well but the 2650 <clears throat> keeps the more you hog it out the more power it makes so i'm like wait a minute guys if you have a 2650 rotor pack and it okay i'll give you a good example the 2.3 liter supercharger on a zr1 let's completely change platforms same rotor pack 2.3 liter a 2.3 liter <clears throat> can make up to a thousand rear wheel horsepower with a 6.2, an export from Kong, a good lid, good, good, I, good inlet air control, and E85. Why can't a 2.3 liter Mustang supercharger make over 850 easily? So the more they hog out the 2650, right? the more power it makes. Look at Greg's car. Made uh, 1,300 or something on a 2.6. So let's say you have a case that grew by the same percentage that the 2.3 did to the 2.6 from the 2.6 to the 3.1 and you give it the same treatment. Don't you think the 3.1 would make insane amount of power? Yes, in my opinion, Yes, but I think the test is so expensive and then that the there's no meat on the bone. Let's say let's say the case, the tooling and everything costs an extra 25,000, 30,000, 40,000 dollars. You shove a 20, you shove everything you've learned, everything you've learned in the 2650 program in the 3.1 case design. The hogging, the porting, the cage, everything and you whip it up to a similar RPM that you did a 2.6. You're telling me a larger, a physically larger rotor pack with a optimized case 
will not make more power than a 2650? I don't know. And I understand what you're saying, EPA, but the Coyote, flo the Coyote flows way more RPM and way more CFM through the cylinder head. So it's not necessarily displacement, it's airflow. So the 2.3 liter in a Coyote, you can't whip it up fast enough to make power. It just keeps making heat. Whereas the 6.2 at 7,000 RPMs, a stock ported head, a decent cam, E85, can make close to 1,000 rear wheel horsepower. Yes, I understand the 6.2 is a physically bigger displacement, but the 5 liter is a better air pump. So, And that's what makes the Coyote great. It's a better air pump. The cylinder heads just flow way better than anything LS, unless it's super duper race ported. So I've always wondered why they didn't apply the same theories they did from the 2300 to the 2650 to the 3100. Now, that point is moot. Now, that tells me there is no further development. I don't think VMP is going to do any further developing with the uh, Eaton company. And that begs the question, are they going to support new for years to come? Do you still have a partnership with Magnuson supplying superchargers until the end of time? And if there is a finish line, I think the dealers should know that. And why am I saying this at all? <clears throat> because I've seen this before. And I've seen a lot of people that sit there and rah-rah a certain thing. Now they feel betrayed. They feel betrayed. They feel that VMP, and I'm going to read the comments in the video real quick. They feel that VMP, waved the white flag, gave up, gave up to Whipple. Now there is no parity. Now there's just a monopoly on superchargers from, let's say, 24 and up. Not 23 and down. Actually, Gen 3. Gen 3 and up is all Whipple. Now, what happens when you shop for superchargers? You stupid idiots go online and say, which one makes the most power? You watch Cletus. You watch all your favorite YouTubers shove a Whipple on it, make 1,100 wheel, 1,200 wheel, and think that that is what you should get. Meanwhile, you're on pump gas. You're never going to make more than 10 PSI. And now your choices are limited. Should I get a Paxson, ESS, Whipple, TVS? Let's say you're a positive displacement person. You're going to want, in my opinion, a, a 2.3 liter TVS. Because if your goal is to be max 800, a 2.3 liter TVS whips up so much faster, makes all the noises you like, all the whining and crazy noises you like, and it's just a better street blower on a stock motor than a VMP Gen 3, Odin, or Loki, or even a Whipple. You put my money... 10 PSI Whipple, 10 PSI 2.3 liter TVS for the driving feel, efficiency, and power delivery. I put my money on a VMP 2.3 or even a Roush 2.3 all day, every day. Now, Roush screwed up with their 2650, made it awful, kept a small case, small inlet, and those things don't even touch 900 horsepower at max effort. You need to throw another 150 shot of nitrous down the bitch for it to go over 900 plus horsepower so it'll be it'll be a bit of a dance to see the real reason in my opinion why vmp waved the white flag to whipple now let's go to their video and guys i i i did not comment on the video i just wanted to let it all play out so vmp puts out a video the other day talking about installing a supercharger on a um 24 mustang now the prob There's a lot of problems with this that anybody can spot pretty easily. Number one, the correction factor is standard, not SAE. And I don't think I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I'm trying to find a spot. Uh, that's Michelle. Whoa. Okay, volume. <clears throat> okay. Uh, doesn't say. So standard. See what I mean? Eagle-eyed viewers are now learning that this shit does not fly anymore. <clears throat> this doesn't pass the test. Standard correction factor is, let's just say, you know, an extra 15 to 20 horse bump. You gotta test everything SAE always. I don't know why your dyno software is set up that way. But let's read the comments. 
Okay, he basically said, we made 810 on 93 octane. It had octane booster. And if they said, no, it didn't have octane booster, okay, then how much power did it make? SAE correction factor 5. SAE 5, not, not standard. We are, it's 2024. The customer knows too much. Stop messing around. They know plenty. They are educated. That's why I'm here. I uh, can't wait to see what this does. This is saying, nothing wrong with showing what the car makes, but you need to disclose Octane Booster, says Oliver Bryan. People are going to buy this with Costco 93 and blow their motors. No way. 810 to 93? No way. I agree. Uh, okay. The con... The con... Okay. Oh, uh, oh, the content from them saying 93 Octane is going to be wild. <clears throat> It'll be nines easily. Sucks that Whipple has a monopoly on superchargers now that the Mustang, not with Mustang. Another reason I won't upgrade to the S550. I'm really happy, S650. I'm really happy with my S550. Basically, he's going in and saying that there isn't that much of a difference between the S550 and the S650. And he's 100% right. Um, and O4 GT Stang says, I think a lot of the appeal for VMP was a TVS sort of thing. I agree. Having that rivalry of camps. I agree. Now that that's gone, I personally bought a Gen 3R for my 03 Cobra and from them. But when I asked for, to trade the kit, throttle body, blah, 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 he just goes complaining, complaining, complaining. Uh, so let me get this straight. Ford is Whipple. Something gets, let me get this straight. Ford is not Whipple. Whipple is VP and VP are nobody's. <laughs> and then someone says, hey, Justin, was this done with v, with uh, Boost 8 in the tank? Someone says 100%. So it's funny what people's definition of 93 octane has become. The customer is now very educated. Gone are the days where you can get away with saying stuff like 93 octane. Gone are the days when you can fool the customer. That's why I'm here. I'm not the person that educates them, but I'm one of the people that try to, let's just say, dispel myths. And this is the only reason I do this. Because when they become tunable, I think Lund Racing being the highest volume tuning company for Ford Mustangs, is going to have to hold the bag and make these numbers not seem absolutely retarded. Imagine you buy a Whipple kit, you take it to your dyno on a Lund tune, and then it makes 670, and it runs at 1099 in the quarter mile, and you're like, where's my 800 horsepower pump gas? Lund must suck. Actually, we're seeing a bunch of knock activity, sir. It looks like your knock sensors are pulling back three degrees. So we are allowing the knock sensors to pull back based on the octane. And you don't have the proper octane to, let's just say, meet a 12 PSI situation. So a lot of people are going to be disappointed. And I'm here to try to bring your expectations down to reality and to earth. 800 on pump gas just sounds so fucking stupid. And I appreciate that the customer is now very educated. And the fact that companies are still putting out this bullshit blows my mind. So let's wrap it all up in a nice little bow. I think going forward, in my opinion, there'll be a finish to the new TVS offerings from VMP. I think they're going to go full Whipple going forward. Cobra GT500. If you want a Gen 3 R for your Cobra, and let's say in a year from now and they run out, I don't think they're going to call Magnuson and say, hey, send me 50 more kits down. I just don't think they're going to do that, especially in that market. GT500, same thing. Coyote, same thing. I don't think they're going to re-up on Odin's when they have Gen 5 Whipples on the shelf. I don't think they're going to re-up on Loki's when they have Gen 5 and Gen 6 Whipples on the shelf. I don't think they're going to re-up on anything. I could be 100% wrong, but I have not been that wrong. I've actually been pretty damn accurate. And I'm basically sh predicting this based on their past. We'll talk about it. Again, <clears throat> my poll up says, what is enough horsepower for you? What are your realistic horsepower goals on a stock engine? I have, how many people? Uh, it doesn't say. 373 votes. 96%. 800 horsepower. 4%, a thousand plus horsepower. If that's not an indication of how ridiculous it is to sell a pump gas guy, a blower capable of a thousand or 11 rear wheel, 1100 rear wheel horsepower, 
Polls like that absolutely matter. Poor boy says, yep, Whipple is going to buy via PL. They're not going to buy him out. I think they're just going to become like lethal. They sell parts for Whipple stuff. Inventing excuses starting from now. How many sets of spark plugs do you think VP goes to with the amount of boosting they use? No idea. Not, <clears throat> okay. So I got stories, but I'm not going to go too in. But let's just say when I was there, they were okay shoving spark down this thing's throat to make the power number. And I wasn't. And the way I operate at Lund Racing, based on their teachings, again, guys, I work at Lund, but I, I have to, I have to basically operate within their guidelines. And Alejandro Flores can desensitize the knock sensor, shove 19 degrees down a pump gas car at 10 psi, and the car will make 720 rural horsepower, but it'll also blow up. And I'm not looking to do that. I let the knock sensors do some work. I verify if the knock sensors are a bit very active on the shift that it is not false knock. And there's ways of vetting that. And once you've vetted that the knock sensors are not pulling timing based on actual detonation, then I would desensitize 20% because typically on centrifugals, that tends to be an issue. I'm happy with 600, 700 wheel on the street and let it live a long life. I rarely try to get our customers to go over 700 rural horsepower mark on 93 octane. But Parker, this is now the world we live in. There are people in the on the Ford side of things that constantly tout 800 rear wheel. That's like nine something at the at the flywheel on 93 octane. And if you were to say that motherfucker's full of shit, it becomes an online fight. And then that motherfucker will say, well, that guy just doesn't know how to tune. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And then you say, okay, I'm going to believe the guy that says I can make the most power because we're all power hungry cycles. Then your motor blows up. Then you wonder what happened. Then they tell you to start a GoFundMe and go fuck yourself. They'll say, take your dick, bend it, shove it up your asshole. That's what we think about your blown up motor. You decided to go racing. That's what's up. And I would never say, well, that's part of race. Well, that's racing, boys. Well, that's racing. No, it's not. It's if I'm out there being super irresponsible, telling people, let's make big power on pump gas. I'm liable. I I I'm liable for potential issues going down the road. Sam 5 says, I'm well aware. The guy I bought my Gen 3 R said he made 1120 on a 69 millimeter upper with only 32 degrees of timing. Oh, my Lord. There are still people. Listen up, guys. There are still people shoving 28 degrees of timing on a GT500 with E85. A 2020 and up GT500 on E85 seeing over 26, 27 degrees of timing. Irresponsible. Well, it's low compression. My Corvette's low compression, 9 to 5. And after 23, at 20 PSI, it doesn't like not one more degree of timing. Not one motherfucker. Alex, not the same thing. An air pump is an air pump is an air pump. I've seen 9 to 5 compression Cobra jets make zero horsepower gain from 23 degrees all the way up to 32 degrees. EPA says 1,000 horsepower you... A thousand horsepower, you you pull out of VMP and hit a bear. Can you imagine? That bear story is wild. Alex, what would happen if you swapped out the TVS Century Turbo onto an S650 Gen 4 with a Whipple 2? Would it work? Great question. So now, let's say you had a Loki. Oh. Or a Odin. Do you you want to hear something funny? If you have a Whipple tune and you can adapt the Whipple throttle body, listen up, guys. If you can adapt the Whipple throttle body, which you can with some fabrication work, behind an Odin, the tune will work. What's the difference, right? If it's getting its IAT2 from the IMRC wires, leave that shit alone. Adapt everything into an Odin. Let's 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 get theoretical, because this is how I operate. 
if a car has a Whipple tune, the TPS, the IMRC IAT2, is the only thing that the computer needs to see. Because between the throttle body and the IAT stuff, it's just rotors and intercooling. There is no adjustable parameter between the throttle body and the IAT sensor that tells the engine anything needs to happen. So if you, VMP, have a Whipple tuned 24, all you got to do is bolt up your Odin and see how it stacks up on that tune. Oh, how do I know this? My Gen 2 Mustang had a Whipple 132 throttle body in front of a whip a vmp supercharger wait a minute i don't get it alex you got a 132 whipple throttle body there's a vmp blower behind it how is it working the computer needs nothing but the tps throttle area and the and the iat2 source so vmp this is your chance now you can have your techs install and adapt an Odin with the Whipple throttle body behind your shit and see how much power this 24 Mustang is capable of. And now you shove 12 pounds of boost to it, you do torque curve comparisons, and you see how the Odin stacks up against the VMP, I'm sorry, the Whip, yeah, the VMP lidded Whipple, Whipple's tune, TVS blower. Woo-wee! See, this is why this channel exists. I explain in very good detail theoretical applications based on my interpretation of what the computer is seeing. If there is no sensor between the throttle body and the IAT2, anything in the middle does not matter. Peace out, Jake, to make an adapter for the Whipple 132 for the Gen 3R. I, I, we did it already. As a matter of fact, my Edelbrock Hush Money blower kit has a Whipple 132 throttle body on an Edelbrock 2650. Guess what tune is in it? A Whipple tune. The car doesn't give a fuck what kind of rotor is in it. The car doesn't go, wait a minute, you got TVSs instead of a twin screws? Oh, I'm going to act totally different. This tune doesn't work. So now, let's say you have a Whipple tune. You adapt the Whipple throttle body on a stock intake manifold and you retain the IMRCs to do IAT2 stuff on a Paxton ESS or Turbo. Now, it might drive shitty. It might drive shitty. But let's say you're targeting the same air load. I think it might work. Blow through, draw through. I... The cold air stuff is going to be funky. That'll be interesting if you guys can get that to work. If the cold air stuff can be incorporated in a blow-through application as a case, as opposed to draw-through, oh, that's going to be a good time. <clears throat> Broken Cricket um, would be great to see the results. But Alex, I want a scolded on my Whipple. Alex, do you think a hogged out Odin and a Whipple throttle would make a lot of power like the Whipple? No. No, I think the TVS designed Odin is limited by the case that it is in. Um, <clears throat> Tune isn't serialized to the blower exactly. I was about to say that. The Fairmont has a 132 without the gasket on an Edelbrock 2650. I know he did it. That's why I called and asked to see if it has one. Got to get me a Whipple throttle body for my Odin now. 800 on 93. Here I come. So here it is. <clears throat> I, hell, do this, guys. Forget the, the, the new 24 Mustang. My voice is shot. I apologize. Forget the new 24 Mustang. Do it on older applications. Can a Whipple tune with a Tomahawk control a, an adapted Whipple throttle body with a, a different manufacturer's blower behind it? Absolutely. As long as it's configured, IMRC is the same and throttle body the same. It's just how it is, guys. In my opinion. <clears throat> Did you see that Texas shop owners was talking about you last week on a podcast? Look, I, I live rent freeze in a lot of people's heads. I don't care. 
I don't care. Like, let if they want to use my name for clout, have at it. It only makes my rep go up more. Good enough performer says, you would have to get your boy Nick at PMAS to make the transfer function for a math in the ESS cold air output same as a Whipple cold air. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Not on a Gen 3 and under. Because you can adjust that in the tune. But on a Gen 4 and up, I don't know if it's speed density in conjunction with some kind of math stuff. Who knows? Rad Dad says, I want a 10 horsepower, 93 pump gas. I'm sorry, but 93, it's where it's at. Parker says, Alex, if any cold air intake changes, big power Whipple guys utilizing just the Cobra Jet Fender Wall deal, I'm meaning to create some clearance for a car that has dual regulators and at the cold air box area. So I know that uh, 1320 Junkie Performance has a 1320 Junkie Performance. It has a PMAS 149 into a Whipple situation. Let me see. Uh, this is a Jason Teixeira. No, I think he's just porting nowadays. But if I'm not mistaken, there is a PMAS 149, Parker. You're going to have to do some custom shit. As a matter of fact, Nick that Nick James at PMAS does sell the housing with couplers. And I think you might be able to find something. I'm trying to see if there's anything here. At 1320 Junkie. No, he does porting only accessories let me see pmas pmas 149 and then i'm going to type in whipple and uh see if it shows up yeah so something like this parker oh look at that beautiful we're racing i haven't heard i haven't said that name in about 500 years so we're racing has this this is exactly what i did to the fairmont basically you understand again Whipple 132, coupler, DD, or, or PMAS 149, and then PMAS's filter, race filter, with an integrated shield, Parker. I don't know about boundary. I don't know why the hell that's there. But anyway, this is from We Are Racing, Parker. So if this something interests you, it's not going to drive well. It's going to drive like butt cheeks, but it'll probably make some decent power. So there you go. Simple Google search away. Did you get a call back about your Gen 1? Yes. So let's talk about applying pressure and getting results. So the other day, I talked about the fact that Carlos Vergara, Valley 10 Speed, was not getting the proper service I thought he deserved, basically rah rahing the ESS kit forever. He did not get a kit sponsored. He basically had to buy it. He then said, hey, Y'all got any better uh, grip tech pulleys or whatever? Yes, they did. And every time he'd go to the track, it would bust up a tensioner. It would not slip out of the groove. It would bust up a tensioner. So that to me goes, okay, that sounds like it's a, the belt's too tight. Meaning the tensioner has to have slack. You can't have a belt that's so tight that the tensioner is up against the stop. So when he would hit a rev limiter, it would slam up against the stop of the tensioner and break the tensioner. So I'm going, it needs a slightly longer belt. But he, uh, Valley 10 Speed, was limited in, in his availability and he's kind of relying on ESS to tell him, have you seen any issues like this before? I think the Grip Tech pulley is fine. If it's staying in the groove at watt, the pulley is not the issue. If it is breaking the tensioner, it is the belt being too tight, not having any slack so that if in case you do hit a limiter, it stays within the, the, the allowable, the allowable area for the tensioner to tension on your belt was probably too tight and your tensioner was at the end, hit a limiter, pow, breaks the tensioner. So now they're going to try a looser belt, but this only happened after I told them on this chat, I don't appreciate the public calling out of Valley 10 Speed on public forums saying that he is incompetent, basically dumb, and that they threw their hands up in the air. Luckily, Brevin got involved and said, I'll handle you. I got you. The fact that somebody else got involved and basically publicly called them names, I thought was a really bad look. And the reason I mention it is because I still care about ESS, but they handled it properly. Because I told Carlos Vergara, sell that motherfucker. 
get yourself twin turbos, and live a happy life. But luckily, applying a little pressure, ESS stepped up and did the right thing. And I love that. So let's talk about my Gen 1. I go to Jake's shop the other day. I said, Jake, how likely is it that a Gen 1 Mustang needs new software in order to program the ABS module? He goes, it's not likely at all. It's a 13. What the fuck are they waiting on? They don't have a Ford IDS tool? I said, it's a Ford dealership. He's like, no. I said, so you're telling me that there is no software update for 2013 or 14 automatic Mustangs with an ABS module issue? He goes, no. Okay. So I called him the next day. Where's my fucking car? I did not want to be this guy. I don't like complaining. I don't like being the squeaky wheel. I'm one of these low-key guys. Just just do your fucking job. Leave me out of it. Well, I called three times today, and guess what? By the third phone call, they had the car on a trailer ready to ship down to me. And I said, I will sign any waiver I need to sign. Bring this car down here. I'll fix the ABS issue. Because I suspect the fact, I suspect that the car got hit Wreck, you guys suggested it too. And I asked the sales lady, I need a video of this car. I still have not received a video of this car, a walk around. So you guys will find out with me how good her long Chevrolet in South Carolina is and her long Ford when I receive my car and we'll see if there's any shenanigans afoot. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, Coyote Austin, I agree. He says, Alex, they're lying. All they have to do is flash the car, most likely has a can C bus issue or a Lynn bus issue. Will the Gen 1 fail if it's a quarter low oil? Hell no, the cold Daniel. Dave, uh, so where where so where so where was it hit? I don't know. The good on ESS. I saw Valley Tensley was about to sell his G4 kit. He asked me, he goes, What would you do? I said, I sell that fucking kit. If somebody talks to me like that publicly, calling me I'm a calling me a dumbass, I sell the kit, shut my mouth, and move on with my life. Luckily they stepped in. Got him taken care of. Roderick Field says, Hey Alex, anyone in the Louisiana, Texas area you recommend uses Lund? You can go to uh, Aces and Aldo comes uh, comes to mind, depending on what part of Texas you're in. How does the Edelbrock 2.3 compare to the 2.3 Roush VMP? Besides Odin, Loki, Edelbrock is the only TVS Gen 3 useless unless you have a DI Delete kit. So, I think the Edelbrock 2.3 sucks. I'm not a fan of the Edelbrock 2.3. This is why. As far as I know, it was not configurable for, for bigger power. I think the type of pulley that it had was a press-on pulley. They did not have a snout that was adjustable or a upgradable snout or inlet to be able to put in a 120 millimeter cold air or a 103 millimeter throttle body. I think... It was what it was, but it made 650 rural horsepower. It made really good. It made the same power every single Gen 2 and Gen 1 road 2.3 equipped Mustang did. 650 on a manual, 610 or so on an auto. So it's fine. Coyote also says, when we have cars at my dealer and they're used cars to service, then we have them being held at service. That means the car's fucked up and we were in the middle of fixing it. Damn, that Gen 1's going to get there looking like that GT500. Someone else shipped back to their customer after Homeboy wrecked it. Wow. Jesus, Nardi. Nardi, okay, you got to understand, Nardi. You are basically doing what I did to get in this industry. How did I get in this industry? I ship posted everywhere. But the ship posting was accurate. And I was calling people on dumb shit. I posted shit about Bama tuning nonstop as YOLO douchebag. And that is what got me noticed. And that's how I ended up working in this industry. I parlayed a troll account calling out everyone in the industry as a uh, as getting a job in the industry. And then when I got in the industry, I found out it's shit. And the same people that were my fans, the same people that were like, you're bad, you're bad as I love you are the same people that ended up calling my fucking boss, saying that they don't like me telling the truth to the to the audience. Alex, can't you run the VIN to see the history of the car? Yes, two owners, no accidents, nothing done. I already ran the VIN. But I don't know if, while well, it was under their possession, because you know how dealerships are, right? They let a salesman take the car home for a week. Hey, drive this thing for a week. Put a couple miles on it. See if any issues pops up. He goes to a meet, does a couple sideshows. 
Guys, I'm going to be checking for everything when it shows up. For rubber on the fucking quarter panel. Like, I want to see that. They didn't beat the shit out of this car. If you want to send me the VIN, I already did. I already did all that. I did all that. <clears throat> yeah, Mendoza's. They said, they said, um, did, did her long Chevrolet slash Ford was like, oh, we're going to send you a video. Where the fuck's the video? I got no video. I got nothing. I'm like, you guys are stalling. So I'm going to call them tomorrow morning. I go, I never got the video. Where's my video? I need to see this car. You guys are stalling. No, we're not stalling. It, then what else do you call it? Come on, stop it. So since VP is out, is Edelbach the, drop, the top dog for TBS? Now that's an interesting one. So even though VP is publicly telling people, we're still going to support TBS, we're still da-da-da-da-da, public confidence has gone down to zero. And the, 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 the customer is going, well, if I'm going to buy a TVS, why would I fuck with Odin stuff? Edelbrock stuff is decent after it's been ported. My Edelbrock wasn't shit until Greg ported it. Then it became badass. It went from me like a low 800 horsepower with a 3.0 pulley to like an 890, close to 900 horsepower with a 2.8 pulley. So the one PSI didn't give it 90 horse. Greg's porting did the bulk of the work. The intercooler was pretty good. It's not as good as v, uh, Whipple's. And it's probably about the same as VMP's. But I didn't see anything that Loki or Odin did a lot better than the Edelbrock, in my opinion. Uh, Manic 50 says, I got to kill a deer for a Roush Stage 2 TBS kit. I need some bigger LU47 injectors and a booster pump for 85, right? Oh, yeah. You need a fuel system and a 1,000 CT injector. Uh, no video, no sale. Uh, it's already signed, so it's all fucked. Alex, they probably don't want to sell it at that price, and they jerked you around with another offer came in after you paid. Uh, it's paid for. I got my first bill. Or I got a account from the bank, a, a letter saying, thanks for becoming a customer. You can say, This is your account number. This is what you're going to be, your monthly payments, da 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 da, da. Okay, cool. So where's the car? It'll show up with new retires and a different brand. Compromise this sale as much as possible. Thank you, team. Compromise this sale as much as possible. Thank you, team. Okay, whatever. I've been seeing a lot of VP blowers for sale lately. Good. Gen 3 plus Roush equals hot trash, says Parker Performance. And Evan Smith says, American Muscle is still selling Roush 2300 kits opinion. Well, what do you want to do? I love the 2300. I love the 2.3. I've always thought it was a wonderful, excellent, great blower. If your customer wants to stay under... 850 rural horsepower, then a a Gen 2 Roush is his Huckleberry. That's what I would get. I wouldn't aim for a Gen 3. But you know how customers are. You're going to have to gauge your customer. You're going to have to tell your customer, okay, look here, uh, Steve. This blower will take you up to 850, which is enough power to blow your car up. This blower will take you up to 1,000, and in order to take advantage of to Anything above 850, probably a good idea to sleeve it and to make sure that the, the car is, uh, you know, built well to make that big boy power number. So you have to gauge your customer. I would record it as soon as you get into your possession. That's the plan. Hit us up for the fuel system and bigger injector. <laughs> Don't spam the chat, DNA. No, once in a while. Missed the beginning. Not sure if you answered already, but would you prefer the Edelbach 2650 over the Gen 3R? No, the Gen 3R rear feed is way better than the Edelbrock 2650. That whole thing sounds weird. It's kind of awesome. They probably don't own the car, don't have the title, and got fucked on trade or something. Um, I don't know about that. So, I don't know how the laws are in South Carolina. I have no idea. But I, I basically bought the car. I signed everything. I got the packet sent to me. Signed about 30 pieces of paper. Shipped it back. Got the confirmation that they got it. And then I got the confirmation from the bank that an account was set up under my name for a 13 Mustang. So once I get it, we'll be good to go. Now, I, I got the notch back in my possession. The notch is in my in my position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bottles filled up tomorrow. I'm going to buy another bottle, get a bottle filled up. Try to get the, uh, the timing down to about 24 degrees. Test that there are no leaks. Make sure that the leaks are, the, the lines are good. It's not leaking. Uh, get the bottle pressure to about 950 or so. We are in Florida, so bottle pressure should not be an issue. Purge it down to about 950 so it's consistent. 
it's already jetted for the right fuel amount. Get some Sunoco 260 or C16 fuel in it. Do a hit in third from 3,800 to 6,000. Pull over. Check the plugs. If the plugs look good, do a 60 to 130 hit and see if I can get into the low sixes, high fives. That's Corvette territory. That's ZR1 700 wheel territory. So if this notch can get into the fives, 60 to 130, you and I both know this is an easy, easy nine second car. It's all about the 60 foot. Didn't see you make 1,000 with a 2.3 on a GT500. IET pretty happy. No, he made like high 900s. He made very close to 1,000. Super ported, um, camped, LNM NSRs. He did the whole thing. So you bought a car without confirmation or being hit or not? Hey, shithead. I ran the VIN twice. Dumb fuck. Don't you listen? Stupid. No wonder your name is Rick. Even your parents knew you were a cock. Dumb son of a bitch. Stupid ass motherfucker. Who the fuck do you think you are? The fucking Twitter finger ass having motherfucker. I did all my due diligence. I had 40 people check the VIN. I did every single little check there is. Dumb asshole. Wow, what a shithead. Did you lean? Did you do a lean check on the 13th? Did you do a lean check? Yes. Yes, I did. I did everything. And it all came back clean. Two owner car. Uh, the guy traded it in for like an F, uh, like a Silverado or something like that. So, yep. Uh, Cardus TV. That, that, that I'm not gonna do a video on G, Senior GT500. There's been video. There's I did a whole video on the dyno with that car. They probably dropped the car off the trailer and tried to load it. Now trying to hide that Shake and Bake podcast ain't got shit on this. What the fuck is a Shake and Bake podcast? Um, uh, that's Ford dealership might be having them auto body guys working overtime to fix the car after I see this episode. Exactly. Alex, you sound rough. Get well soon, dude. I sneezed literally <clears throat> a thousand times before I, seven o'clock i'm good did the thumbnail start sneezing for no, now i'm good because the five benadryls i took are kicking in um alex thanks for the knowledge you got it brother um another show another turvy i hope it works out that sucks somebody else ask him if he ran the vin exactly did you run the vin you're stupid you didn't run the vin i said like two weeks ago i ran the vin I wouldn't have bought the car without running the VIN. Um, always good to do PPI on the state out-of-state vehicle. Not all claims get reported to Clue or Carfax. You're right. How about that Lemon Law? If they did tell you a dud, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Like, it, the car is going to get modified. And if it has good compression and a good transmission, I don't really care about anything else because I'm not looking to keep this car to be a collector's item or anything this car is going to be a semi-daily drag car <laughs> epa says alex did you run the vin shake and make podcast i think that's um stevie fast and some other guy like i, I don't know them from a hole in the wall but shake and bake like shake and bake like that's what you're going to call your shit um any regrets on the gt 500s welds and now that you got the gen one no 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 i got bell x on it what was I going to put on? Hey, I have Bell X on it, Elver. I can put them on the Gen 1 and put the Brembo wheels on the GT500. Come on. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he's like, aren't you mad you sold your welds? I'm like, I have Bell X on it. I can swap them in. So deciding the motor combo is going to go with the Fairmont. Um, no, I, I'm pretty good with the Fairmont. Now, the both cars showed up to the their perspective locations uh i'm gonna try to um have the guy doing the uh the work on the fairmont okay this is where i'm at with the fairmont okay and i know you guys are probably gonna think i'm crazy <sighs> if it comes back and the cage looks phenomenal the mini tub looks good and the front tubular stuff looks good i might just take advantage of the fact that it's a shell and paint it right because it's not gonna be a street car and I want to paint it the same color, same color scheme. But it all depends on the budget. You're making fun of my name. You look like somebody's uncle that voted for Biden. How's it? You look like somebody's uncle that voted for Biden. Okay. Wow. I mean, holy shit. That's what he's got. Alex, off topic. But you got to update your about section on YouTube. It has old sponsors, info, and other out-of-date stuff. 
Look, I don't really care right now. Nobody looks at my about section. I think you guys tuned in for the for the talking shit episodes, and that's kind of where it ends. Um, now, Dick, that's not nice to say. Call someone, Rick. You haven't been here long enough. Alex definitely did not vote for Biden. Yeah, he he definitely doesn't know. See, I think a lot of people think they know me based on clips. They think it's clips. They go, um, "Oh, I see him rant on Instagram. That's all he does." And when you actually listen to the to the to the stream, you go, "Wow, he's actually trying to drop knowledge." You know what I mean? Um. Oh my God, this guy's so stupid. Rick, show me what you look like. I need to see your Facebook page. I need to see your Instagram. I need to know if I'm not dealing with another Turvey because for a while, I went in on Turvey. I went in on Turvey. And then I saw that he had a touch of Down syndrome. So what I'm going to do, Rick, I'm going to do you solid. I'm not going to go in on you. I wonder what you look like first. And if you look like I think you look, I'm going to let you slide. Because something tells me you're retarded. Or at least look like a turvy. Uh, paint it hush money green. No, no, no. I'm not going to change any color. I'm, it's going to be the exact same color scheme if I do do it. If I do do it. Um, let's see. Rick Bench is 135. Rick dropping heat back. Rick dropping heat back it up. <laughs> he won't. No way. Look, everyone that calls me out anywhere... In person, they want my fucking autograph. They want to talk. They want to chit chat. They never say, "Fuck you, you're a bitch" to my face. No way. And if they try, it's usually I'm in. I'm working somewhere. Like imagine trying to get after me when I'm trying to keep my job. But when I'm out there on the street, just hanging out, or at you know events or whatever, nobody says nothing. It's always funny. Um, exactly. But now we love Turvy. Like now we love Turvy because we found out he's retarded. So you can't go out of your way and make fun of him. Because I bet you Rick is the exact... Imagine you get riled up over a, a guy on a on a stream. Think about that. Midnight, I don't think the uh, dating channel is coming back anytime soon. I got to concentrate on this channel. This channel makes money. This channel has influence. This channel is important. This channel has a lot going for it. I'm going to chill out with that other stuff. Do you have any thoughts on the small block four for the Fairmont? If so, I can hook you up. Stop it! God damn it. Craig. Let, let's talk because you have experience. I would love a small block forward that is badass. But this is what's going to happen, Craig Walls. If I want to make a thousand on a small block forward, what's that going to cost me? Something that has a well built bottom end, good heads, great cam for turbo stuff. And I want to go 770, 760 in a 3,200 pound car. What's that going to cost me? The motor, just the long block. That's it, long block. Not No no carburetor or, or, or injection system or fuel, whatever. It's probably, it's probably going to be fifteen to $20,000. Am I wrong, Craig Walls? A bone stock Gen 3 long block can do that. But actually, channel has no chat. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know what you guys, okay, I, I I got, do you guys think I have like a lot of money? I have I make okay money and I invest it all back into the channel. Every dime I make from this show, as you can see, the Corvette's up there, the Fairmont's up there. I bought another car. I have the notch with the nitro system and the GT500 motor is going to get built whenever the heads come back. So every dime I make goes back into this. I don't have crazy six-second, build a six-second car money. We just sold the vet and picked up a small block Ford Fox. Um... Silver Surfer says, says, I've been in my lately, saw the ZR1 getting some work, transmission only, getting done right now, transmission and clutch, that's it. RPS twin, Ben Calmer built 6060, and that's it. And it should be a nine second car. I mean, if we went 570, 60 to 130, make 700 wheel, car weight 3,300 pounds or so, I can't imagine it doesn't trap 139, 140, and that's enough to go 9.9. <clears throat> EPA says you want a Viper, no funds for a small Ford right now. Eye on the prize. Could you probably buy an FFRE Coyote for what you build a small block Ford for? See, Cole Daniel, so let's shadow. I was one of these dumbasses that never checked the VIN on the car. And I just set, I just wired a dealership money without even, even doing my, any of my due diligence. So I'll get delivery when I get delivery, apparently. Um, at least have the interior floor pans cage of the Fairmont resprayed, clean interior and patina exterior. Rick found that profile pic on Google. Look what you did, Rick. Oh, never mind. 
Wait, is there a profile pic uh, of Homeboy? We can find out. We can find out if it's Instagram and Facebook. Because I want to make sure that if I'm talking shit, that the dude is sizable. That the dude can, you know, take the, the abuse. But if he's like, he's, he has a number two tattooed on his neck, I, I'm not going to talk shit on him. Um, thanks for watching and supporting Rick. <laughs> exactly. Alex, what is the best intake manifold to pair with ESS G3X on a Gen 3 Coyote? <clears throat> The stock one. I don't, I, I don't think it's that big of a difference. So Craig Wall says this. I have a complete... <laughs> oh, Craig. I have a complete intake to oil pan, aluminum, small block forward, that's been 655 at 212. And I think I'd like to have your notch just to fuck around with. I'll email you tomorrow. Um, I don't think you want that car. Hey, Craig, I love you. I love you. That car's not for you. That that car is not for you. That car, my small block Ford equipped notch, is for a father-son project. Something that they want to work on together, um, restore it slowly over time. This is not, this is not the car for you. I love you. But talk to me about the uh talk to me about that motor for sure. So why should I sell my new Gen 3 R4 stickers with the Gen 2 R on my 12 GT500? I, I just, uh, no idea. His, pal, his picture is on free pick. Did a Google search? No, it's not. Do me a favor. Um, go email me a photo. Email me a photo of um, email me a photo of, of that profile that you're talking about because I, I can't imagine it's that fully available. <clears throat> Uh, he added a PFP look up in the chat. It would, <laughs> let me guess. It's a big black guy. <laughs> of course. Ah, love it. I want to get back to my roots. Oh, Craig Walls. If <laughs> clapped out Fox bodies are your roots, this might be for you. <laughs> if clapped out Fox bodies, Craig, I love you. This car is not for you. I'm trying to say it without saying it. I love you. This car is not for you. Uh, father and son project, Turvey and his dad, Rick. <laughs> oh, you got to love it. Uh, Brandon Dill says, oh, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. Rick must be customer service for AED carburetors. Um, net picking about lethal VMP and Whipple for putting work in your, your rental condo. Stop crying old head. Another guy that doesn't show his face. Why is it that the ones that talk the most don't show this is my face this is my this is me by the way i live in palm beach county look it up it's not you know it's not kentucky it's not georgia it's not tennessee it's palm beach county why, why is it that i'm not afraid of putting myself out there this is what i look like this is shit i talk this is where i'm at and the one that talk the most shit that watch me the most and know everything about me are anonymous show your face they won't. They never do. So, okay, back on the uh, Fairmont and um, Notch stuff. So the engine is going to probably be a, a Gen 3 long block. Now, I have a Gen 3 long block. I have it. Gen 3 bottom end, Gen 2 top end, Gen 1 cams. So I can lock the cams, put it in the Fairmont, or I can just keep that motor for when the Gen 1 motor blows up. I can slide this guy in there and be comfortable over 900 horsepower without a problem. Um, that's the fifth one. They're multiplying. Rick had to go make a new account just to give Alex another view. Uh, look, the more they the more they reply, the better this channel does. Someone says, EPA says, Rick is Justin. I'm a first time listener and I'm here to talk this shit, but you think I'm cap. Oh. <laughs> I don't care. You talk the shit, back it up. Like, talk this shit, back it up. You brag about rental condo? Stop your embarrassment. Where do you live, nanny? Okay. Are you doing better than I am? So, are you making over $200,000 a year? Do you have a main job where you influence pretty much everyone in the Mustang community? And your side hustle makes... I bet you my side hustle, this, in, I put in about eight hours a week, well... Just the shows. I guarantee it makes your salary. But but uh, I wonder why you, if I suck so much, 
why you're here watching me. Nobody's watching you. Uh, hell, that's a track ox. Exactly. That's Rick. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Fema and Illuminator would be solid. Rick, Nanny, and Turvy are going to tell Lund on you. Okay, cool. So we could we could we could we could do a head up, whatever you want. You want to talk that shit and back it up in person? We could do it. Not a problem. Because I bet you you won't in person because you're gonna go, I really have no dog in this fight. Why am I talking shit on a guy I don't know? But yeah, I'm down. Right, no problem. Uh it it's bigger than that, Alex. They don't tell the truth. Um, I think that's okay. I, look. Having people on the chat that dislike you is normal. If you watch the Tim Pool, the, the, if you ever watch Tim Pool, dude, everyone hates him on that chat. Everyone thinks he's a bitch. They call him bald beanie guy. He doesn't give a fuck. He's just like, eh, whatever. Just bank, banking in that money. You can only influence 300 members who you tune through. Lund, you're delusional. I got 560 on right now. <laughs> I, got, I got VMP calling me to try to make sure that they let everyone know that, uh, uh, no, 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 TVSs are going to be around for a while. I have ESS, the owner, hitting up Valley 10 Speed because I posted or said, y'all better take care of the kid. I have people calling my boss because I called them lying on what the car is doing on a dyno. Like, I mean, if you think, if you think that this show has no influence, it's all good. It's all good. I don't know, having a fast Fairmont Z01 GT500 and a Fox and a Caddy Escalade sounds like you're doing well in your rental condo. <laughs> you got to love it. Um, meet at Yard House. <laughs> if you don't have haters, you're not doing it. And I and that's fine. And that's fine. Look, let, let them hate all they want. They're probably Mustang lifestyle guys that think, you know, that he's legit and stuff, which is fine by me. So let's get back on the whole TVS thing. So if you guys were to, based on what you know, if you're going to build something, and based on the poll, 800 of you, 800 horsepower, 95% of the people that polled said they want to stay under 800 horsepower. So let me ask you, if you wanted to make over 1,000 horsepower, would you stick with a blower? Like, would you stick with a blower if you wanted to make over 800 horsepower? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Turbo stuff, I know, it's blasphemous. I love supercharger stuff. Big supercharger stuff is good, but then big supercharger stuff comes with big supercharger problems. Belt, tensioning, and heat. That's what you got to realize when you try to make big power with blowers. Every big pro charger car that I tune, F-Series, or something that's over 15 pounds of boost, has massive IAT issues. So then you have to remedy that. At least with turbos, you can get an efficient enough air-to-air -air that you can keep IATs at bay up to 1,000 rear-wheel horsepower. Jake's truck has a has a an air-to-air -air intercooler, and that sucker doesn't get above 110 at all IATs at 1,000 rear-wheel horsepower. So I think people don't understand that if you want to make 1,000 horsepower, you're going to go right to turbo stuff. Now... Again, that's not street car stuff. In my opinion, once you go turbo on a Mustang, it stops being a street car. Why? You have to be under the hood all the time. Not necessarily adjusting anything, but let's say the amount of heat shielding that you have to wrap up and you have to make sure that it's not touching anything. You have to relocate the fuse box more than likely. You have to put the regulator somewhere that you normally wouldn't, or unless it's a mid-mount or bottom-mount kit. Now you need a scavenging pump to make sure that the oil feed is proper. So that becomes less and less street to me. It becomes more, I wouldn't want to drive a twin turbo car from here to California and back. Now a Roush supercharged car that makes 650 to 700 on pump gas, absolutely. Belt's gonna be good, I'm gonna be happy. I can stop at every gas station from here to California and back and not have any issues. So I think this, crazy notion of selling people blowers that can bring you all the way up to a thousand horsepower or more is short-sighted where you should be selling 90 percent of your customer base blowers that are live live in the 800 range no problem why do you think ess why do you think of ess is so popular guys the packaging the intercooling is pretty good and it makes 800 900 horsepower easily
like ridiculously easy it can make it so the moment you want to make more power like i told valley 10 speed i said look you're already making 1100 the car trapped 158 dude it trapped 158.92 with a 1.5. The 1.5, 60 foot. So if he went 1.5, 60 foot, 158 in the quarter, and 9.2 with an ESS kit, why the hell would you want a Whipple Gen 6, a Whipple Gen 5 Crazy Boost, or a VMP Gen 2R or Gen 3 that can make up to 1,000 when a tiny little ESS you can put together in your driveway in eight hours can propel you into potentially the eights. It's crazy stuff. Alex living rent free in their heads. He be sounding like new money BMW guy. Rick can't afford a couch and a bed separately, so his futon touches the wall. I mean, look, these guys. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't phase me. It's all good. In person, they ask for my autograph. Trust me. Every single time they say though, they'll do shit head up in person, and I'm at a meet or a show or something. They don't square up because they don't know me to square up. They just dislike the show. Um, an efficient turbo kit like Aldo Weld's kit um, takes less PSI to make power and less stress on the motor. <clears throat> Trying to fight people on the chat about cars. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, I don't see him. Izzy, you want to pull up and run that mouth? I'll give you the two-piece. Oh, here we go. Talking like George Masvidal. Um, that's how you know people ain't about that life. Then they talk too much. They talk so fucking much. Matt Oliver says, 800 or 1,000, you can't make that NA. Critical thinking skills you've walked us through and will dictate which use given your power goals. Um, man, I'd get rid of my Whipple Gen 5 for a 2.3 TVS Gen 3. On my Gen 3. Um, ah, What are you doing with it, though? Dad. <laughs> His name's Dad. What are you doing with it, dude? Yes, notch vid video coming soon. I'm going to show you the layout of the nitrous kit. I'm going to show you what we did. I'm going to try to get the nitrous bottle filled up. I'm going to try to get you at least a uh, data log. Not a data, a data log. I'm going to try to get you a video of just a third gear hit, checking the plugs, and a 60 to 130. So this is the goal either for this weekend or next weekend because I'm just busy and, and senior probably still looking to work on the Mustang to make Texas 2K. We got a lot of stuff going on, so I need to kind of like figure out what I'm going to do. Got to get the nitrous bottle filled. Got to make sure that the timing is set at 24 degrees. Got to make sure that I do a pull in third gear at about 900 or 50 or so bottle pressure. Check the plugs immediately after the pull. If the plugs look okay and video the AFR gauge, that's the other thing. I have to rig up a GoPro that faces the AFR gauge underneath the uh, heater controls. If that stays somewhere in the high 10s, low 11s, I'm going to send it, do a 60 to 130. Hopefully it lives through that and if it lives through that and i check the plugs and everything looks kosher then i'll drop that video and then i'll try to uh make a track rental sooner than later track rental only uh alex be careful they're gonna get you to your computer screen they never do thank you uh thank both of them for the watch time exactly um hope he hope ess makes a gen one kid vortex and the belt change looks awful it's not fun it's not fun. Alex, uh, look, the belt routing is not bad on the ESS. The belt routing is way worse on a Vortec. You want to see really shitty belt routing? Go ahead and pick up a Vortec kit. Um, Stick Shift 18 targeting 18, 800 real horsepower. I'm currently on 10 PSI and getting the itch. I don't get shit. I don't get a shit. I don't give a shit about being the fastest. Honestly, dude, just pull it down on the Whipple. Just get 260 GT. Pull you down to about 12 PSI. It'll probably make 750, 770 or something like that. Be super good. If you're going to go E85, you can pull you down to whatever with the fuel system with, with that Whipple. I wouldn't go out of your way and start pulling stuff out of it just to have a 2.3 and, and retrofit that. See? See what I mean? Like that, he's an immigrant. I was born in Boston. And that, first of all, it tells you he's white. Okay, so we know we know he's white. Uh, and he says I'm an immigrant, so I mean, so you were totally indigenous to this country, right? Like you're Mexican, right? Like Mexicans have more right to this country than than like Irish people. <laughs> Alex makes money off of the haters because of the views and engagement on the show. My turbot is dirty. Says once you start venturing over 700 to 750, things get exponentially expensive, and the parts are always breaking. 
that says, oh, hell no, man. I'm just saying if they made one that was direct fit, I'm not worried about cutting shit up. Um, glass roof. I found glass roof asks, how did the 2300 search go? So I have, I have found 10 or so 2300s for sale. So finding one is not going to be an issue. I just got to get the gen one here. Once everything is kosher with the gen one, do some NA stuff. Look, I'm going to do some stock stuff. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drive it, do a watt hit, see what the knock sensors do on 93 octane Record that 60 to 130, which will be so freaking slow, it's going to blow your mind. Then I'm going to go ahead and put Sunoco 260 GT on the stock tune. See how much timing it adds and do a 60 to 130 that way stock. So stock 93 octane, stock 260 GT, data log both passes and give you a give you a back-to-back uh, -back comparison. Nanny, those videos have made me over 1500 bucks when i cried about lethal that made about 800 bucks when i cried about vmp and whipple that made about 700 bucks so i made in two videos close to 1500 bucks um rick thinks it resonated the leader is a tune if i got to says uh eddie Rotana, thank you for the 10 bucks alex <laughs> what horsepower would you straight pipe a cap back okay alex so what horsepower would a straight Pipe cap back restrict you in power. What the fuck did you just say? I don't know what the fuck you just said. Uh, okay. I don't know what you just said, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm ready for the 10 seconds, 60 to 130. Nanny, I can't even spell uh, out and about. That's how, you know, he's got to have a 400 credit, credit score. Okay, cap. You want to see it? Oh, you want to see, I mean, you want you want you want me to see them. You want me to see the metrics? He said cap. The the video on the VMP stuff. Remember, I do a show for an hour and a half. The VMP and other videos that I talked about and lethal stuff have over twenty thousand views and the reach time, the 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 retaining time, meaning audience retention is over an hour. That means ten thousand people per video watch for over an hour. And then I have ad revenue and then I have super chat revenue. Between those two videos alone, I made over 1500 bucks. 956 in the house has only uh, only rears. Uh, Parker Performer says, Alex, do you know Jonathan Andrews from the For the Parts? He's got to use two, three routes with an ice tank. I don't like the ice tank situation, Parker Performance. Um, I want just a what Donnie had. Donnie had a underhood ice tank, a little one that replaced the Roush uh, reservoir tank. And you can put ice in it. And I want to do it that way. I don't want to run a tank in the trunk, lines up to the front. No, 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 no. All I want is um, basic, basic stuff. And yes, we did see, uh, no, I did not see that, Parker Performance, the failed DI injector. M maybe you need to email me that again. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that, Parker. Okay, so Gmail. Um, and who the fuck says cap? You fucking child, cap, child. Uh, someone sent me Rick's picture. <laughs> oh my god, I, I can't even make that up. Um, DNA and wheels, uh, wheels. Da, 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 da. Let me see. Um, Parker, 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 send it to me again. And this is this is the reason that a lot of people. Uh, made fun of the fact that I said DI deletes are something that's... Here we go. Perfect. Found it. Oh, beautiful. So Parker Performance sent me a picture of what looks to be a DI injector that looks like it melted, right? So again, imagine this was a boosted car and... Let's say you're shoving 20 pounds of boost to it and you're making 1100 wheel or 2000 or, or, or uh, 1000 wheel and the DI injector decides to clog up and be an asshole. Now that cylinder might have issues with fueling because there is a blending factor. We actually keep the DI firing even though you're on E85. So imagine you have a boosted car and this DI injector decides to 
leave the chat. And then I tell you, it is better to delete the DI than to try to work with it because Ford's model of with, with the DI injection is not as robust as Chevy and, and their counterparts. So Alex Chud's DI delete are a good idea. And guess what? That was an NA car, according to Parker Performance. Parker Performance says it was dumping raw fuel in the cylinder very nearly cost a motor. Again, the reason I said that the 4DI should be replaced if you're going to go with performance applications is because it is unreliable. And even NA, like Parker Performance showed, it can damage your motor. I'll give you an underhood ice tank that I have sitting in the garage. Sam 5 send it over. Um, here goes the sheep crown for the immigrant dad feeling. See, again, so, so he's a white guy. He's young. He probably a Mustang lifestyle nut rider. Again, I'll give you my autograph when you ask for it when I see you in person. Oh, hey, uh, Alex, um, um, I'm that guy Nanny. We're cool, right? We're cool, right? I was just kidding. I was just trolling. <laughs> Alex Knobloch says, My tuna told me don't get a PMAS. They're garbage and far too big. Lost all faith in coming to Lund. Apologies for not being from the beginning. Who the fuck told you that, Alex? Who told you a PMAS, cold air intake, is garbage and far too big? Oh, my Lord. Dad says, Nanny, you followed Alex's mentality of working hard. You'd make it, man. <sighs> NA with just a cold air intake, long tubes, only E85 for three years. Derek says, I have a Gen 2 350 looking at Go ESS. How much boost with pump gas support with ID 1050s and a BAP? You can go up to 10 PSI. Now, remember, guys, the GT 350 heads flow phenomenal. So even a 120 millimeter pulley might not produce on a G3X, 10 PSI. Remember, boost is a measure of restriction, okay? Think of it this way. If you have a 120 millimeter pulley on a ESS uh, GT350 and you go watt to 8,000 RPMs, you might make nine and a half PSI. Same car, same tune, stuff a banana in one of the tailpipes. It'll make 13 PSI. Now you're gonna go, wait a minute, it made less power. Or let's clog the cat. Let's clog a catalytic converter and let's see how much boost it makes. It makes more boost, but less power. Why? Because the flow is being restricted. So on a, let's say GT350, a 120 millimeter pulley that would normally cause 10 PSI on a GT, on a 350 might be nine PSI because it flows better and there's less of a restriction. So even at nine PSI, it might make 700 wheel. Where at 10 PSI on a GT makes 660, 670. I hope you guys understand that restriction is the deal. Boost is a measure of restriction, says the Street Alpha podcast. Verified, by the way. So it is a restriction you are measuring. So when my four and a half liter Whipple makes 30 PSI, I think in actuality it's seeing about 26 because. The VMP TVS at 24 PSI makes 80 horsepower less than the four and a half liter Whipple at 30 PSI. So a five PSI difference and only about a hundred horse variable. Now, if the Whipple was flowing better at 24 PSI, it would make more power than the VMP 2.6 at 24 PSI if just based on the volume alone of four and a half liter versus 2.6. So pull it at 30 PSI and it only makes an extra 100 horse. What does it do after that? It just makes a bunch of heat. That's all it does. It just pumps in a bunch of heat because it can't get the air in the motor fast enough. So there is a boost number that is higher than the power would, 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 would show. Hey, Street Alpha, did Tommy Faya pay Huracan Ian his $150,000? So... I'm not going to give up what we we and um we have going on. Uh, which part do you want to clip? <laughs> on a serious note, I've been reluctant to get a quick jack. Does it block your access from the side of the car when pulling transmission? You can get it so high, Dad. You can pull the transmission back from the from the back of the vehicle or the front of the vehicle. The side doesn't matter when you're up that high. 
Um, no nanny owns a three valve. Two valve was too expensive for him. When is Alex coming on the Street Alpha podcast? You could ask Street Alpha podcast. Banana in the tailpipe equals more boost. Boost is the measurement of all pressure delta. No boost pressure means you have all the flow. No flow means you have all the boost. <laughs> Very good. Um, I had a two valve miss the shit out of that car. Uh, Street Alpha, you got to do a pure dry trace solutions pod. And Alec Bledsoe and Alex, of course. So pure drive train solutions has finally gotten on my radar. So before I said, and let, let, let's let's be honest about this because we're here now. I said that if you want to go eights today, you can do it with a Gen 2 Coyote, no problem. You can also do it with a BMW based on the support now, 7s is a different story. I've seen stock motor, 7-second, S550 Mustangs, Aldo Weld, and a couple of others. But BMW now is there where you can say bone stock motor, boost, and fuel. And these cars are 8-second cars. Camaros are not there yet. You still have to open up the motor, cam, maybe head work, because I don't know of any 10R80 Camaro that you can shove 20 PSI to it or 30 PSI to it, whatever, and have it run eights without the engine exploding. Um, but the the the, the pure drive chain solutions uh, wrinkle tells me that now that pure drive chain solutions is supplying BMWs with badass transmission builds, pure. Can you get on the 10R80 game and see if you can figure anything out there? I'd love to see that. Nanny ghosted us once the address was dropped on the chat. Odd. Wait a minute. What address? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, what? There was an address on the chat? Can someone remind me? Was it, you said it's Indiana? Someone says something about Indiana. Pure Drive Chain is the same guy that started FTW Fuel. So are you going to get an M3 instead of a Viper? No. Viper is king daddy. Not going to lie. I've been looking at BMWs. I've seen them run low nines on the street. Um, Damn Midnight. I never thought I'd see Mott mentioned here. What's Mott? Isn't some, that some workout thing? A pithy or witty remark. Archaic note, horn, or bulge. Bulge? A bugle. <laughs> <laughs> I read bulge. It's bugle. What is the full meaning of Mott? No. What's, does anyone know what Mott is? Ruby 50 says, hey, Alex, S550 versus S197 Streetable can run a high eight full interior. Which would you pick? Six already, by the way. Thanks, bitch. -o. S550 for the drivability and the uh, comfort level. Alex, to answer a question for the people on my DM, DI Delete went straight to the track. No fuel issues, no revisions, just one file. Valley 10 speed after a DI Delete received one file and it went to the track and it trapped 158. Alex Pure Drive Train does the 10R80. Go to their site. Hey, you guys got to start looking into that. Um, you brag about 10 year olds broken jug. None of them drive right. Okay. Pure already does a GM 10 speed. 80 did not sound happy on the shift. Oh, uh, that's not good. Um, when's the Viper coming? When when Nanny uh, watches my videos more. Because look, if I get a Viper, a ZR1, a GT500, two, must, two other Mustangs and a Fairmont, they'll still say, say this. Well, he's an immigrant in a uh, condo somewhere. Mott Nationals. <laughs> Tommy Fett is a YouTube scammer who scammed a guy in a forum and yearly 2000 for a motor. I bet Nanny watches every show. Definitely Alex's biggest fan. Every single guy that hates you the most watches you the most. They, I mean, they they all watch you the most. But that, it's all good. All right, we're going to get out of here. So let's wrap it up. Today I talked about my theory as to why VMP decided to offer Whipple stuff. And I think it had to do with the lack of proper vetting of a 3.1 TVS rotor pack from Eaton. I think if the 2300 went from a certain case design and then the 2650 went bigger and taller and they did not do a similar thing from the 2650 to the 3100 bigger and taller to accommodate for the rotor pack that could be a reason why it didn't perform like they thought it would when they did not let's just say 
do the proper vetting. They were potentially trying to stuff a 3100 TVS rotor pack in a 2650 case for fitment so that they wouldn't have to redesign a whole new case. And once that did not pan out, they decided to not move forward with that situation. My theory, not something I heard from any insider information. And I think that's what caused them to go, fuck it. Let's just do Whipple stuff. Let's become, let's get out of the blower game. Let's just become a Whipple dealer and then reconfigure Whipples with different cold airs, different throttle bodies, and make it an accessory style business as opposed to a blower manufacturer. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Thank, I want to thank Nanny and the other uh, Rick, the ones that will never step up in person, talk all the shit. Uh, I'll, you'll be watching me from Indiana or Georgia or whatever while I'm in my condo in West Palm Beach, Florida. Working on my ZR1, my GT500, my nine, soon to be nine second notch, my soon to be nine second S197, and my soon to be seven second Fairmont. Oh, oh, by the way, I have a Cadillac. I'll make a, I've owned the Cadillac for a year today. That's right. Today marks a year since I've owned the Escalade. I'll do a year, I'll do a year uh, review for, um, for all the, for, for, for Nanny specifically. I'll say this is my year review of my escalade just to see how everything has gone all right guys i'm out of here thank you for watching i'll see you guys on thursday and i will be doing peasant chats sunday at night at eight o'clock at night is when i will be doing peasant chats so that more people can watch so the algorithm keeps going and that i don't have to wake up super early and be all groggy and i can maybe make some events maybe make some car shows maybe make some cars and coffee and bring you that content because i want to I get content heavier now that uh, the cars are starting to come back after having some work done to them and i'll try to get you guys more videos uh pretty soon all right guys i'm out of here i'll see you guys later and see you on thursday see you later bye